Hello, maths fans. Today we're going to be looking at graphing functions and analysing their key features on the GDC, Graphical Display Calculator. Um, so we've got this Casio uh, CG50, FX CG50, at the ready. But before we even get into using the calculator, we need to understand some of the language here and know what the key features of a graph might be, the things we might want to find. So, three things that you might uh, be asked to find are intercepts, X and Y intercepts, uh, turning points on a graph, when uh, you go from a positive gradient to a negative gradient, or vice versa, from a negative to a positive, uh, and asymptotes. We'll come on to those in a second. So, what are those three things? Well, intercepts, Intercepts, I've got a graph here um, with various points on that graph. Useful points are, are labeled there with their coordinates. Now the intercepts, we've got x-intercepts, and we can find those x-intercepts basically wherever that graph goes through the x-axis. So when I'm talking about the x-axis, it's obviously uh, the line through the middle of the graph here, that one there. So wherever the graph goes through that x-axis, those are x-intercepts, or sometimes called the roots of the graph. So if you're asked to find the roots um, of a function, or if you're asked to find the x-intercepts, it's where it crosses the x-axis. And you just simply look along that x-axis, and you'd read off the x values, so minus 2.946, 0 0.252, and 2.694 would be the x intercepts or roots of this particular function. Okay? The other intercept you will have to find is the y intercept, and that is obviously the uh, where it crosses the y axis. So there's the y axis. Simply scroll down the y axis until you find where the graph crosses it uh, and whatever that y coordinate is here it's one that y coordinate is the y intercept of this function now for the y intercept you're never going to get more than one for a function because then it wouldn't be a function because we only have one output for every input but we've covered that before hopefully you've covered that before so y intercepts look at the y axis you'll find a uh, you should find on most graphs, there'll be somewhere where it crosses the y-axis, and then you can say, here, it crosses at 1, that's my y-intercept. That's it. X, uh, intercept, where it crosses the x-axis, y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. Pretty easy. Moving on to turning points. So, as I say, we're looking at the point where the graph goes from having a positive gradient to having a negative gradient. That is a maximum. When you go sort of at the top of a hill, if you're looking at it, that's a maximum turning point. And then when it's gone from a negative gradient and it starts to become a positive gradient, that is a minimum point on a graph. So here I've highlighted those coordinates, and that coordinate there is the maximum, and this coordinate here is the minimum for this particular function. So maximums and minimums, useful things to find in the graph. Uh, the turning points. That's it. Find it on the graph, look it up. Here we go. Moving on from turning points, we get to asymptotes. Now this graph I'm looking at here doesn't have any. What an asymptote is, is a line that the graph kind of tends towards. It gets closer and closer and closer to a line, but it'll never ever reach it. It gets infinitely close to the line, but never reaches it. So if I look at this function, uh, this reciprocal function that's on the screen here, uh, we have a vertical asymptote, uh, and that vertical asymptote is the line x equals 4. Remember, vertical lines will always begin with x equals something. And you can see that this line goes down, down, down. It's going to get closer and closer, but it never quite meets it. And we can check that. Uh, it never meets it on uh, our graphical display calculator in a minute. This one you can see 
once it gets down to four, it kind of flips over and goes sort of miles up in the way in the air there, and then comes down. So we have this vertical asymptote. It will never quite touch the line of x equals four in this case. So it's it's a line that the graph goes right close to but never reaches. Then we also have a horizontal asymptote, and you can see that one across here. You can see the graph goes very, very close but never quite meets uh, that horizontal asymptote. And we read off y equals 1, all of the coordinates along here, the y coordinate is 1, and so that is the line y equals 1. Horizontal lines always beginning with y equals something. So that's asymptotes. They're lines uh, that the graph gets closer and closer to, but never quite meets. I could go to x is at infinity, way up here, and it would be so, so close, but it wouldn't quite meet that line, y equals 1. And I'll show you in a second how we can check for that on the calculator. So let's move to an uh, example where we do use the calculator to find some of these things. So there's the three things. We've got asymptotes, turning points, and uh, the y and x intercepts. Three things we're going to be looking at today. Here's a question then. So we're going to consider this function. y equals 2 to the power of x divided by x minus 2. And we've got our calculator here. So let's put that into the graph. So this is using uh, number 5, the graphing capability. You can see I've already entered it there. Just be a bit careful with your fraction buttons using the X, the fraction button, powers here, uh, typing in that equation. Hopefully we're all competent at putting in the equation. When I uh, want to see that on a graph, I click F6 to draw the graph. So here we go, F6, let's see what that graph looks like. Okay, it's this strange kind of graph with a bit missing in the middle. Just before we get into answering these questions, something that's very useful to know is that we can adjust the size of the window. You might find that you end up uh, not being able to see much. So if I, for example, if I just got this, this isn't a very good rep representation of that graph. I've missed a whole part of the graph in this negative um, side of x. <coughs> Excuse me. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this V window. So I can press Shift and F3. Or actually, I think I can just press F3 on this case. And you've got a few options here. You can go to Initial. And that Initial one is, is a good one because it fits a rectangular window that we have. So if I show you what that looks like, we draw our graph. We're back to where we sort of began. And that goes from minus 3 to 3, roughly, and minus 6 to 6, roughly. So that's one of the options on the window. You can just use that initial. If you don't see enough of the features of your graph, you might want to zoom out a bit. So you can actually choose what you want as your x values. So let's say we wanted to go maybe minus 20 all the way up to 20 on the x. Uh, ignore scale and dot for the moment. Uh, let's go back to V window. So shift V window. Uh, then I'm going to go down to my Y minimum, and let's go for minus 20 to 20 on that one as well. Okay. Now then, we're going to exit, and we're going to draw that now, and you can see I've got new axes to look at. And it, you might find it's useful to zoom in and out on graphs. There is this zoom function, but I find it's easier to, to use the view window. That's what the V window is standing for. So have a little play with that. Make sure you feel comfortable. You can scroll left and right and up and down on graphs. So you can do a quick sort of search left and right for uh, maybe there's another turning point that you haven't seen yet or another bit of the reciprocal graph that's missing. Have a little scroll around, play with the V window, make sure you've seen all of your graph. Okay, I'm just going to reset that window now uh, to the initial, like that. Uh, if you do this standard one, you get from minus 10 to 10, minus 10 to 10. That one's uh, absolutely fine we can do that um, when I draw that you'll see though that the x-axis is more stretched than the y-axis doesn't really matter it's up to you if you want them to be looking nice and uniform um, but anyway so here's my graph let's answer these questions now so find the axes intercepts to do that I'm going to use the G solve 
function. So above F5, we should find G solve. So I'm going to press shift uh, and G solve. And now I've got all these options. I've got root, max, min, uh, Y intercept. Those are the four I'm going to be uh, looking at for the moment. Uh, and the axis intercepts, well, that's going to be for the X axis. I'm going to use this root button. So I'm going to click on F1 for root. And it shows you, there we go, there is one of your uh, solutions there. It's told me x equals 1, y equals 0 is a root of this graph. Now if I actually zoom in a bit, you might find that you can probably, if I zoom in even more, and I'll zoom in on that graph over here, you can see it actually goes down below that line. So we've actually got two roots here. And when I did that uh, G solve, it showed me one root there, but I need to go across, click the right arrow to find the other root. So make sure that you've studied your graph to know that there are two roots rather than just trusting the technology. So there's my other root at X equals two. So we've got one at X equals one and another root at X equals two. And those roots are uh, the X intercepts where the graph crosses the x axis. And that's when y equals zero. Uh, so there's my solution to the first one. Uh, oh, sorry. And also, we want to check the y intercept. Well, in this case, we've actually, uh, let me just go back to the standard window. So there's my graph. You can see that actually, this graph, it's going to get very, very, very close to the zero. But it's not actually got a y intercept. And when we use the G solve and click y int, uh, y i set intercept, it says not found. So there is no y intercept. This graph will never quite touch the y intercept. So there's no y intercept, and my x intercepts were 1 and 2. Okay, let's move on to part B. Find any turning points, and we can use the G solve again. It's a very useful feature. So let's go uh, draw this graph, and then let's go G solve. So I can press shift, or I can just go straight to F5. Let's do it properly. Uh, and I want to find the turning points. Now, the turning points are maximums and minimums. Well, if I look at this, I can't really see a maximum. Let's just see what happens if I click max. Not found. OK, there was no max. Uh, let's try if we do a minimum. And that's very nice. It shows me on the graph where the minimum is, and it gives me a coordinate. X is 1.44 something, Y is minus 0.116-ish. Uh, so that's it. You just have to go into that G solve, click on max or min, depending on what you're looking for, and then press. There it is. It gives you the coordinate at the bottom here. So my min, I have a minimum at 1.44. Uh, negative 0 0.116 down there. Right. Let's now find asymptotes to this function. Well, for this, you, you need to be looking at the graph, trying to think, where do I think there's uh, an asymptote? And then you can test it. So in this particular case, if I'm looking at that graph, I think, let's uh, zoom in a little bit, And I can see some lines on the graph now. So we've already sort of half established that there's one at x equals zero. So let's click this trace button. So F1 here, or Shift F1. And you'll see, if I scroll left and right, what trace does, it allows you to sort of scroll along your line, along your function graph. And if you want to try a specific point and a specific x value, what you can do is just type it down here. So I want to test, is x equals 0 uh, an asymptote? And if it's an asymptote, there will be no uh, y solution here. So let's check. And it says y equals error. So that has confirmed for me that at x equals 0, the line doesn't come across it. So therefore, that is an asymptote. So use your eyes, basically, for asymptotes. Check the line. There is, um, you can sketch 
So if I click this sketch button, I can click 